Hello everyone, a very good afternoon. I am Gaurav Dubey from Logistics Insider and I welcome all the audience and our distinguished panelists to our third EMEET warehousing sector rising to the COVID-19 challenge powered by TCI supply chain solutions. We are a month into the nationwide lockdown uh, due to the outbreak of novel coronavirus. And as we find our way out of this pandemic situation, each day we are reminded of how it has completely changed the many shades of our life, society and economy. The virus has its consequences and will leave a lasting impression on industries throughout the world, especially the unorganized ones. And it is no secret that the warehousing industry in India is largely unorganized and highly fragmented, which means it is taking a major hit in the present scenario. Now, a warehouse is a fundamental part of business infrastructure and is one of the key enablers in the supply chain. I would like to request our today's moderator, Mr. Jazid Sethi, who is CEO from PCI Supply Chain Solutions, and to take the charge and officially start the image. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're comfortable in your homes or some of you may be on your place of work as well. And uh, I hope you're keeping good spirits, uh, both for yourself, your colleagues, uh, and the family. Uh, it's important to look after yourself holistically at this point in time, and I hope you're doing that. Uh, friends, we're living very strange times, and many quotes have been dug up about this. Uh, one of my favorites is one which is attributed to Lenin, which goes as follows. There are decades when nothing happens, and then there are weeks where decades happen. Uh, nothing could be more true of the last uh, four weeks, what we have seen, uh, compared to maybe even decades of change, even a country like India, which has a lot of pace of change. Uh, now, while nothing could be closer to the truth, some of us may argue that this was a disaster waiting to happen, why didn't we prepare, what blindsided us at all. But this is for another forum. Our forum is on warehousing, which is a critical part of supply chain. So we will keep to our subject of warehousing, how it is coping up to the new challenge. Uh, I am with a very eminent panel, and most of them need no introduction. But I would take 30 seconds to recap uh, when I invite them to share their views. For benefit of all, uh, we will uh, keep this session into four parts. Uh, first, I think it's important to have a perspective. So how are things leading up to the pandemic? Was it on a high? Was it on a medium? How prepared we were? How were things going on? We get a perspective from everyone about how things were till the pandemic and lockdown happened, which is, I would say, pre-20th of uh, March. And how warehousing has coped up in the last one month. We have seen various stages in different states, how we have coped up, both from the perspective of as an ecosystem and deliveries as well, and third, a little bit of crystal ball gazing, more from a perspective of uh, uh, a studied view of how things would be going forward in the future. Uh, for purpose of the future, let's call it the new normal, because it may take a long time before uh, we go from pre to a post COVID, there would be a time of life with COVID. Let's call it the new normal. So how we would be working in the new normal and uh, to a life of COVID. And the last part would be question and a answer, which would be open to everyone. And uh, there is a general chat button. There's also a QA and a button. So any questions can be put on the questions uh, icon and we will take them up. And if something in between or later on, we'll try to keep it engaged with everyone. So we uh, uh, are having a good interaction almost as we were in the same room. Uh, there's also an option for uh, raise hand for mic. Uh, please use that judiciously. That is for if somebody have wants to make a comment or share a question, they can come live on the platform and share. Uh, at that point in time, uh, please do ensure that you are on a Chrome browser uh, because that is where the experience is better and not on a mobile network, uh, not on a handheld your laptop or system so that your question is easily heard by everyone. So I would like to, uh, you know, start off the first part uh, of how things were before uh, the lockdown. May I first invite our most eminent Dr. Bikram Lamba, uh, who is representing Warehouse today. Uh, he needs again no introduction. Uh, he has been a political and business strategist 
with a combined experience of over 50 years and very diverse fields such as civil service, teaching, management, uh, both as a profit center and also as a consultant. Uh, he also holds many degrees of, of, M, uh, of my, my Master of Arts as well as a PhD. Uh, he also regular speak on many forums, including the World Economic Forum at Davos. Over to Dr. Lamba, uh, the stage is yours for your opening remarks. Thank you, Jaisi. Well, this pandemic is nothing new. Let's be very clear. Right from 372 AD till today, there have been 18 pandemics. The last one was, of course, SARS, and before that was Spanish flu. Now, in the Spanish flu, if you remember, the death toll was 50 million. After, and then there was another semi-pandemic, which spread from China to India, Korea, Japan. The death toll was 30 million. That was in 1919, just one year after the First World War started. So this is nothing new. As a matter of fact, the only thing new is that it's much more widely spread. Spanish flu was mostly in Europe, less in North America, more in Asia, Africa was free. Ebola was more in Africa, less in Asia, but a small segment of North America was affected. This is for the first time that the people all over have been affected. One thing more, just see, I'd like to add that the death toll here is no, very no. low. The mortality rate is 0.6% only. That's a major thing. And secondly, most of the infections are being caused by a symptom. There are no symptoms of the people who are spreading the infection. But yes, the supply chain has been disrupted badly. The economy has been shattered and we are going into a new normal, as you very correctly said, but that new normal would be starkly different from the normal that we are habituated with. What the new normal shall be? We all know it shall no longer be necessities, comfort and luxury. It shall be desirable and essential. Only two things. And it is desirable that the warehousing comes in a major role to play because warehousing industry has to be poised and geared to meet that role. And for the other aspects, economic, social, political, that is, of course, for the other four or two. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lamba. Uh, may I request you, Am Amartya, uh, for your opening remarks. Uh, and before I do that, let me give a brief introduction for everyone, though you are very well known. Uh, of course, currently your role is in Flipkart, which is a very strategic and operational port. And you handle a team of more than 5,000 people and uh, deliver around uh, 5.5 uh, million orders uh, a day uh, across 3,000 pin codes of the country, which is almost 20% uh, of the uh, nation. Your previous experience has been in different forums with uh, Burger King, Yum Brand, Sajinta and Britannia. So you have a wealth of experience and uh, we request your views, uh, both as a, from an e-commerce perspective and others, how things were leading up to this pandemic situation. Thank you. See, uh, I totally take Dr. Vikram Lamba's point that it's not new for uh, the fraternity that we are getting this COVID. But again, it is also true, none of the uh, ecosystem was prepared to have this type of shock, economic shock. Uh, coming to the retail and e-commerce, uh, it is actually the same uh, same uh, type of problem uh, the entire industry is facing as the other parts of the business are facing, like textile or any other manufacturing company. Now, the, how we are actually taking this up in the larger ecosystem, how we will fight it back, and what will be the situation? in next two, three months or next one or two years that we cannot anticipate at this point of time. Uh, the reason is very simple. One, there is a drastic change in customer behavior which will happen in next two, three months. Second, this is the demand pattern, the growth and the type of businesses or the channels of retail that will have, take their own place. Now, if I talk about last six months, 
that was a very good time. I, I'm not talking only of e-commerce, but if you say the food retail industry or the overall retail industry, they were actually at the they were growing in a big big manner. In month of March, uh, companies like Burger King thought to do IPOs in the market, and that has actually stopped right now. Uh, back end, there are a lot of other complexity which a retailer will face, which we cannot foresee right now. Uh, one important aspect will be the warehousing and the supply chain. Why I am saying supply chain? When I say supply chain, it is not only the logistics part, but the procurement sourcing part. There are certain certain uh, uncertainty which we cannot forecast, uh, like uh, shelf life of the product, where many industries are heavily are dependent on the food cost of the product and those all items are having a shelf life of four to five months and those are again coming to us uh, but they are not moving and there will be a hit on those aspect uh, th those type of things in their pnl this is one thing second thing uh, warehousing and post covid after covid the manpower will be a very big determinant how it will behave because most of the cities we'll come to that a bit later. Let's let's keep the post COVID uh, a bit later. Let's get the perspectives of how things were yeah. uh, as of now. So we hear everyone of uh, till this is till now. Is, is that fine? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's fine, Jesse. So my entire aspect is that we are not prepared in that way, and we are actually coping up with new solutions, new designs to see how the things will be happening right now. And also, uh, as an industry, it is a great shocker. We never thought ki in our PNL or in our business continuity plan, we need to actually keep a provision of the situation like this. So people, every industry, including e-commerce e and retailer, are not prepared to take this shock. OK, thank you. So, so what we hear so far from uh, Dr. Lamba and from yourself is that one is that it is not a new thing. The pandemics have happened earlier. But we and uh, from you we hear that the last six months were things were looking better couple of years the economy has been a bit subdued but it was looking better it was on the mend so to say when this thing has struck struck uh, again so uh, lieutenant uh, colonel holker if uh, i may uh, you know uh, come to you please yeah good afternoon uh, Good afternoon. So we were speaking about, uh, you know, uh, in four, to discuss in four parts. One is that how were things leading up to the pandemic? Uh, right. Were we really doing well? Things were on the mend uh, when this thing hit us or we were still a little bit subdued. So your views a little bit going towards that and you have experience of both the uh, army as well as of the civil life. And uh, I also see from your biodata that you see that you have experienced two pandemics and two economic downturns. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, and uh, of course, we heard a wealth of experience from uh, Dr. Lamba. Right. So without further ado, if you could give us your perspective, how things were in your industry and overall in the warehousing sector prior to this lockdown on around 20th of uh, March. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sethi. Firstly, uh, you know, let me uh, compliment our supply chain persons who are actually the COVID warriors who throughout this lockdown period at their own personal risk have been working in our warehouses, in our factories, our drivers, who have been ensuring that the supplies of all the essential items to the entire chain. And you can still see some semblance as long as you can make your cup of tea every day in the morning, right? So that's a big, big thing. And we should be very proud as supply chain professionals that we are at the front of all this war which is going on. Second part is, uh, see, in my industry, March and the, like Holi is one of the most important uh, benchmarks to start this season. And before that, we ensure all our productions are in full place, our warehouses are loaded. And then we can also see that there are a lot of other uh, readiness of the season that is available into the system. Mr. Sethi? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. there. So what happens is You're... that this entire uh, till March, everything was all right. And suddenly, and it happened all of a sudden, right? Where we suddenly realized that we are unable to move our stocks, our vehicles, which were en route, have been struck. And we had as many as 300 odd vehicles struck at different places. We had to trace out these vehicles. We had to locate those drivers. There were restrictions from district to district, not even states. 
and which we have to clarify, we have to clear them, give them some documents to move. And as the things have progressed, now I can see the wheels have started moving in the industry. That, that's great. That's great. I think that uh, the warehouse industry really stepped up to the challenge. And uh, Absolutely, I was yeah. thinking that you would say that you can still have your Pepsi, but you mentioned a cup of tea. So yeah. <laughs> to start <laughs> to start the day now Pepsi will come. It's very hot nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great. L let's move on while we uh, while we wait for other colleagues to uh, join back in. I think uh, Amartya, you were very keen to discuss about times now how you've been coping up. I think I would want you to start off on that, and then Dr. Lamba can give a wider perspective to how well we have coped on uh, with this life with COVID. Uh, in the last uh, one month or so. See, uh, as per Mr. Mr. Atul was saying, yes, uh, the thing is very positive in terms of supply chain, where actually government has, uh, did their right intervention and at least we are supplying the essential to the aid custom. So that is a good part. And another good part is that we are live in the sense we don't have demand, but we are still live to start the operation as soon as possible. So everything is ready. So whenever the a COVID piece will be restriction will be getting off from the system. We are fully ready to start our full fledged supply chain across country. And it is not on uh, mostly on e-commerce part. If you see uh, food retail like uh, last mile delivery partner like Swiggy and uh, Zomato, they are actually working very well with many channels. That is there. Second good thing which has happened in this crisis situation when we don't have our mainstream supply chain open for all the products. That time, a lot of innovation has happened. So we are, we have started thinking which we were not thinking for the last six months. Can we do a centralized distribution channel? Can we do an integration of the back end? Can we do a direct sourcing partner with the retailers who are already present like Hiranas and all? So those are the aspects we have thought and there are a lot of uh, trials which we have uh, taken, not only uh, my company, but across all the companies where they have uh, tried to do a cross linkages to serve the customer. So that is a good part. <laughs> the next part, which I feel uh, what will happen in next COVID season, mainly on the food industry. There are, I, I come from a retail background. I worked with the QSI for a long time. So I can feel uh, we always operate with the inventory of 15, 20 days. And our shelf life started with three to nine months of shelf life. More worry point is that after COVID, this all the stores, the food retail store, the industry, is mostly focused in the malls and high streets. And these places will have lesser footfall, so demand will come down. And the inventory which they are holding basis the demand of fare, that will go to 90 days, 120 days. So there is, will be a huge expiry rate to this all industry. So that will have a very uh, reversal effect on some of the industry who, who cannot come back. Well, they cannot cope up with the current situation. And there are the financial implications. So the post-COVID situation, it will be at least three months where actually all the industry will be balancing their demand and supply. May I again pause you that we uh, go for okay. post-COVID a bit later? No, no problem, no problem, no problem. Yeah. So uh, a, a couple of questions here, and then I would want Dr. Lambert to comment on that. You see, when demonetization happened, which was uh, uh, an event where the currency was sucked off uh, in the four hours of midnight of uh, 8th of November 2016, uh, that time the e-wallets came in and it was called a Paytm moment or stuff like that. When this time a uh, similar situation has happened, there's not been an online e-commerce moment. And it's the local Kirana stores who have actually stepped up and you know kept the supply lines going. So A, I would want a reaction from you on that. B is that were the e-commerce people blindsided by having groceries and the non-essential items in separate warehouses so that some of the warehouses could not even start operations because they were not holding any essential stuff. And I'm asking a lot of questions, but one more to go along with that. How easy is it for a supply chain of essentials only to happen on a hub and spoke arrangement, which is probably 10% total portfolio, without the non-essentials coming in? Is it possible to do a door delivery with only a small uh, part of it? To you, Amartya. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, so I thought you have put this question to Dr. Vikram. So I want him to comment on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, see, uh, it depends on the policies of what government is placing towards us, right? Now, we are not allowed to deliver any non-essentials, and that is the policy of the government. 
Now, if you say every e-commerce company, it can be a grocery like uh, uh, like uh, uh, the companies who are their big basket and all, and companies like us who who are we are also into grocery, but we have not taken that pie of business in a bigger scale in last uh, five ten years. So the point is that within this circumstance, we have catered the items where we have a backend supply chain, and we have done it very well. Now the question which you have asked here is: Can that 10% of essential is making sense on the cost aspect? Definitely no, it cannot because that if I don't give density, the the cost of the last mile logistics or the uh, connectivity is much much higher than what we actually deliver. That aspect is there, but the belief in the uh, any e-commerce company is that this is a situation that they are not doing for profit. This is a situation. As a team, as a as a backbone of the country, we need to come up, and whatever the situation, we need to service that, and that's it. that was our total intent. Now, why Kirana is doing? The question is that Kirana is allowed to do that. If we were prepared to, because Kirana service mostly the food items to the people, and if you see, see the density of Kirana in, across India, it is in millions. Uh, the total uh, the spread of Kirana is so high. We, it cannot be competed in any part of the world. It is only available in India. So Kirana is obviously a very good resource where they can actually do this job, and they have done. But within this structure, one thing is very clear, which again I am coming on next ten year. E-commerce or any retail need to get a better penetration, and that is a day is coming where we will be uh, actually replicating or will be more uh, intensifying inter our job into the end customer. Uh, to deliver all the items, which is not uh, we are not structured right now. So that's where the situation lies. And uh, COVID again, I say I am saying COVID is a very good situation where we got a lot of experience to evolve, and that will be helpful in our future. Thank you so much, Dr. Lamba. If you want to comment on that from a both outsider in and an insider out perspective, sure. How well uh, did the industry, especially e-commerce, cope up with this uh, in this duration? And any other comments you wish to add, please. So, Rajit, thank you. Let's be very clear that warehousing and supply chain are the most resilient industries in the world. There can be no denial of that fact. And both supply and demand are softened. But and you know, if I look at India specifically, all the triggers for the warehousing and supply chain are intact even today. GST, make in India, automation, e-commerce, organized warehousing. In some sectors, not in all, they are there. But the problem here is when you talk of Krena, there has been a lacuna in the warehousing supply chain and the Krena, and that is that there is no integration in the two. As a matter of fact, if there had been integration, the Krena stores could have been the front side, and they could have been supplied to the e-commerce. Then there's a Basically, a strange regulation I'm talking about, but that would enable you. one thing more. Today, when we talk of depression, today when we talk about GDP falling down to zero percent to one percent, there is one factor, and that is the best property today. Where all real estate prices will be falling all over, but where housing prices are not going to fall appreciably. There might be a small decline, but not much. Now, coming to the second part. Which we were talking, Kirana stores were, are, and would continue to be. So you have got to make adjustments, as I said earlier, to make supply to the consumer through them. So there can be two alternate supply, alternate supply modes. One directly to the consumer, the other is through the Kirana store, and that will ensure that in such a situation there will be no disruption. The biggest problem this time has been disruption. Not the failure of the triggers, as I said, all the triggers are there, but the disruption took place. If we had associated Kirana stores as a part of our strategy, this situation would not have happened. And the future, of course, will take up later as you directed me to do. Thank you. So, do, do you feel that there would be a wing of the Kirana stores now that people would look at the Kirana stores and look no. for more of a? No. Not a permanent. It will revert back to the original. People would go to Kirana store as they have been doing, but the e-commerce is going to come back in full force, 
And as a matter of fact, about a passive fairness, people might rebound. You know, when you throw a pebble, the ripple effect is always there. And the ripple effect is here as well. But then don't forget about the herd mentality. You get tired of doing business with Kirana stores, so you want to revert back. Just the it. novelty would have been. I, so it's not going to harm. I just want to add. As such. Mr. Sethi, can, can I add to what uh, Mr. Lamba was saying? Dr. Yes, Lamba. Please, please, please feel free. Yeah, yes, so, please, Atul, uh, welcome. So talk loud. Uh, so what I was saying is that Mr. Lamba is very correct. I am I'm telling you that if you look into the complete scenario at this stage, nothing much has changed. It's just, you know, we have exaggerated this last one month of lockdown beyond our life. You know, there is no natural disaster that has taken place. Agreed. All your infrastructure is in place. The consumer is waiting and you just, moment you leave the consumer, you will see the rush that is going to take place. We will come back with a revenge on to what has been done to us by, you know, making us sit in our home. So consumerism is going to increase. As far as manpower is concerned, not even, I can't even understand at what level the manpower is impacted. Except, yes, they are not available right now, but they are there. It may take few months for everything to be in place, but the fact is, everything is intact in the world. It's just a matter of time. It's a way of living. We all will adjust. Yes, there are some industries which is going to be impacted. Those industries will also find a way to deal with the situation and come back. The best thing about humans is the resilience to bounce back. Yes. And let's not underestimate the capabilities of us professionals and the consumers and the humans as you know, people all around us that they have the capacity and we have been, you know, this news media over a period of time have been enhancing this entire scenario of doomsday. I saw this in 2008 also. In 2008, mercifully, they are not showing all those Rahu Ketus moving around us. But in 2008, they used to do that as well. And they used to show that everything is being destroyed. 2009, we were back. Same thing happened with Ebola pandemic in West Africa. Everyone in the world was very scared. But eventually, what happened? We all recovered. If you see the overall disruption, it is taking place, but this is bound to change and it is going to going to go back to normalcy as early as possible. Thank you, Karun Holkar. I think we keep that thread with us and we'll come address it in, in, in a few seconds. Let's have Mr. Pathak who's back. So, Dindra, if you want to give your some remarks. I'm sorry we lost you a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, there is some uh, connection issue from my side. Uh, uh, now it's connected. So, uh, uh, actually, I was disconnected uh, on uh, whole this discussion, but st I will start where you started opening comments. So, uh, in, in for this uh, uh, COVID-19 situation, I would say India was not prepared. When you will compare this situation with European countries, they are they are they have kind of automation in the in the warehouses and uh, in in logistics infrastructure. So. So comparing those things, when it, it will, the time will come uh, to uh, after this uh, this uh, situation, this uh, uh, these uh, restriction will lift. Then no, probably we have to think on the automations in the warehouses, uh, so that our dependency on the manpower can be uh, you know relaxed in that term. So so that's the uh, uh, remark I would say in in warehousing to start with. Rest this whole situation. If we don't know how, what's the impact? As Holkar sir rightly said, nobody know. Uh, I mean, this labor is not has not gone. It is uh, they are there. So probably this this uh, this restriction will lift. Then probably we'll come to know uh, how much labor and what kind of resources we are uh, we are impacting. So 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 in this way, I think. Uh, I'll start with the automation kind of thing. We have to think on this part and uh, we'll, we'll work uh, towards making uh, strategies uh, so that we'll be prepared in future for such kind of pandemic. Uh, thank yeah. you. That's great points. The elephant in the room here, and let's address elephant, though it is not part of a subject, but the elephant in the room which was yeah. brought forward by uh, Colonel Holker and earlier addressed offline by Dr. Lamba, is that is how much yeah. of the situation is actual and how much is exaggerated? Is it becoming a bit man-made? Right. So why it's not a part of subject, but let's get that addressed that elephant in the room. 
So uh, just giving some uh, numbers, on 22nd of March, the day of the Janta curfew, the total COVID positive cases in India were 396. On the technical day of opening of that uh, lockdown, which is 15th of April, these were above 20,000. So they grew 50 times uh, in the 24 days of lockdown plus semi-lockdowns in that period, when all the industries were closed and people were home. That's one data point. Uh, second data point is that for making people stay home, fear has been used as a tool. That if you go out, there's going to be a problem. Now that fear is probably cutting both ways. It's cutting that people, when they have to go back to work, they are afraid of venturing out. And uh, the people who have gone migrant villages back to their homes, they are also not being allowed to come out. There are uh, areas of warehousing where you have a large ecosystem of a local uh, panchayat or a village who do not want the warehouse to open because they feel that they, they will bring in the pandemic to our doorsteps. I will pause at that and would request comments of Dr. Lamba and then uh, Dr. Colonel Holker on that. So we get this elephant out of the room. Well, let me be very clear, Jesse. You are 100% right. This pandemic is grossly over abused. Media, politicians, they seem to be hand in glove in creating fear. Fear that should not have been there. As I said earlier, more people died in Spanish flu, more people died in Asian flu, more people died in Ebola, more people die of AIDS, and every hour, according to CDC, Center for Communicable Diseases USA, 5,000 people every hour die because of tuberculosis. Now, talking of the so-called vaccine, till today, vaccine has not removed a single disease except plague, whether it's AIDS, whether it's TB, whether it is malaria, malaria is bad. So vaccines are not going to help. Is again the resilience of the human beings which comes into factor. It is media hype. And there's a, the political point, there's a growing trend towards authoritarianism. So these two factors combined made the people feel afraid. And the whole thing was there. But in reality, if we had let it with the fatality rate of 0.6% as calculated by John Hopkins University and Harvard University, 0.6% is one tenth of what the road accidents claim as a life. We could have ignored it and things would have been normal. The whole situation is man-made. This pandemic, it is there. I'm not denying it. But it has been blown out of proportions and made people afraid. Okay, nice. Now, fear is the black god mother of all damnable things. And all damnable things are happening, leading to recession, leading to the collapse of economy, leading to the higher taxation, leading to the more hunger. And I'm more worried about the coming generations. And that's why he said that given the presence of the triggers, for the supply chain, given what we are doing for automation, I wrote an article, Future Trends in Warehousing Industry. You can find it on the LinkedIn. You would find that the, what Honeywell is doing in the center of excellence, if that is adopted all over here in India, and which I've asked Sandeep to do it in his warehousing, the things will be much better. But just eat, honestly speaking, this is a bugbear. And you are not afraid of bug bills. One should not be. Let's take life as it is. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Not not easy to follow up on what you have said, but I would still request Lieutenant Colonel Holker to add a couple of comments. Yeah. And then if someone has a comment on the other side, so let's get the elephant out of the room. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I agree uh, to Dr. Lamba to quite an extent as to these are exaggerated figures. But then it's like the tiger in the jungle. The tiger still is there, right? So we need to, yeah, we need to take adequate precautions. There is a way of living that has changed a little bit. And that is where the industry leaders and, you know, if you look into departments also, the HR has to become more medical oriented than actually, you know, just a recruiting agent or now in this current stage firing agents, right? 
So what they need to do is, like you rightly mentioned, the panchayats and all in the warehouse areas are pretty disturbed, and there be a very clear instruction. But if we show very visible ways of handling this, you know, when the uh, worker comes into the place, he is look sanitized, he is given adequate food, he is covered, he is de- again sanitized when he goes out, his family is looked after. These kind of soft approach of managing humans will has to be enhanced. And then the people have to be assured that we are together into this, and that assurance will bring the community feeling, take away the apprehensions, uncertainty, and take away that fear. And together, in any case, we have to face it. What has it done is that we have been, you know, segmented into isolation, and that isolation can be physical, but not mental and psychological. Together, we can resolve it. Mr. Uh, Sethi, please. Can I come in because I was not able to participate? Is it okay yes, now? Please, of course, please come in. Now, on this forum, I would like to discuss. You know, this warehousing supply chain. Uh, the disruption has happened, and how we are going to meet out these challenges because which was totally uncertain. As you all know, last week we had detailed conversations with other infrastructure areas like CFS, ID, uh, ICDs, port terminals, and all that. now we have already represented to the government the the biggest challenges now with this capital intensive and labor inter- intensive industry basically now ports are getting full because of that all our cfss so we have about more than 8 cfss in india all are getting full and thereby we are now requesting our importers to clear it as, as early as possible in the meantime during the lockdown period the government has come for come out asking us to give the complete waiver that has become the excuse for all the importers and exporters not to do the business or not you know, keep the containers and treat the icds and cfss as their storage yards now the biggest challenge is that in order to decongest port cfss and icds have been established now even cfss and icds are going to be congested now basically now the warehousing supply chain areas will have to come in quickly and ensure that the importers move the containers to the warehouses and start of course we have forwarding distribution challenges like transportation and other evacuation problems but it's high time that warehouses have to come in quickly to take care of this congestion otherwise the whole thing will be in a chaos once the lockdown is open because we'll get completely knocked down the most, the most important challenge now is going to be of course you have already discussed about the labor and other issues i don't want to go into the details now as warehouses in india sorry to say that we are not organized in the sense that this this uh, you know india being price sensitive with regard to the customers as as well as with regards to our own our own suppliers now what is happening is that when we have a ultra modern warehouse and now we have invested so much of money now what kind of a relief we are going to talk about because everywhere port terminal is talking about air cargo complexes are talking about cfss are talking about in the last meeting in na cfs all india uh, you know cfs meeting i said the warehouses warehouse keepers operators will have to come forward and group together and make sure that they they also form part of this entire supply chain so that we can raise our voice to the government and what kind of relief at this point of time because they have declared it as an essential industry with all these problems our employees have cooperated we have put them at a risk but what kind of relief this warehousing sector is going to get see now i have signed a long term lease agreement with my uh, with a, with a, with a warehouse owner now what kind of moratorium i am going to get for my warehouse warehouse rentals because the law, at least for 3 months we are not going to have much of business or deliveries and then what kind of uh, you know uh, you know the restructuring of the lease agreements we are already having with the warehouse owners we are going to take it up because they also have lock in period so many other commitments that has been made but we never expected this kind of total uncertainties with all due respect to our doctor i must say that 
considering the size of this country and the quantum of the population we have and the kind of spreading, this is a community spreading disease. Please understand, it is not like any other disease. So we have to take a lot of precautionary measures because we are we are we are labor intensive as warehousing unit as a supply chain unit so we need to now find as a uniform platform of course investments are going to come in future in automation you will talk about artificial intelligence robot handling all that is there even in the present circumstances having invested so much of capital are we able to take our return on investment or our customers are willing to pay for the kind of arrangements we have made, the facilities we have extended in the warehouse? That is the question. With all this, my submission is that quickly we have to make this as a priority sector, number one. Unless you make this as a priority sector, we will not be able to get any interest waiver on loan or we are not going to get any soft loans in the future because again we have to invest in our capital equipments how are you going to handle this how are you going to do by making some industry prosperous don't make warehousing units sick we are the backbone of logistic industry unless government comes forward and clearly makes lot of financial benefits and also contribution to the employees including the insurance sponsored by the government as ha is happening with the other other governments in the world unless they come forward and give us a kind of a stimulus which is going to make us not to become sick but at least going to be yeah, because i am not i'm i'm not pessimistic but i am seeing the present scenario will definitely continue for one more year because um, I, I have to tell you here even before the COVID-19, we were suffering almost six months. It is because of trade war and China's problem started from January, this COVID. So this is after that, we got into the problem in India and this repercussions will be there definitely for next 12 months. How are we going to be prepared internally as well as externally? How we are going to group ourselves as a warehousing unit to going, uh, going to represent the government, including I'm talking about IT benefits. Yeah, we have to be treated as an infrastructure unit and they should give us certain exemptions in IT. The number two, most important is that reduction in GST. That is also very, very important. And they have to extend certain important benefits to our employees and the laborers. Thank you, I will again continue. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brito. You raised a lot of valid points and I'll not attempt to summarize it, but just a couple of takeaways from this is that the warehousing industry, especially for Exim, has got boxed in with the government mandate to give people free days of storage without uh, giving any benefits to the operator. And hence, you are feel, getting a feeling of being boxed in uh, from both the sides. Uh, some shippers may also have played the system. They felt it's better let, let the goods be there in the CFS than bring home. And the impact of this could be the supply chains have come to a grinding halt. And uh, ports will start getting choked next. So this could also have another cascading impact, which is what is being felt the last one week, 10 days bolo, bolo. by the CFS. It would then start be felt by the port. You also raised a very important point of uh, how far you can go Hello. into reducing your own costs. The Hello. person you have leased the warehouse from, the people you are hiring and all. And these are very live questions. Uh, I will take these things forward and uh, during keeping during the COVID times and just request one or two things which you and other people have done. I just want to Chris points to keep supply chains going in the warehouse in this time, looking at the overall ecosystem and ensuring that you don't have a COVID positive case in your facility, which could potentially lead to a close on the facility. If just you have done a couple of pointers to help the audience a lot in trying to get the best practices. Uh, uh, Amritya, if you can, I can go with you first, please. Amritya, you are on mute. Sorry. Sorry, you are on mute. 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 Sorry, you are
See, uh, we are going totally uh, compliant with the process and system which has been governed by governments, that is the six feet distancing. And it is not, I'm not talking about the uh, particular flip card, the entire fraternity of e-commerce are following that thing, which I know with different sources and within my organization also. We are not, so the first important thing which we are putting forward is the precaution which we need to maintain to service the regular work. On that, if you are having a hit on some productivity or any other aspect, we are taking that hit. The first important aspect is to keep people safe, like six feet distancing. Every wishmaster who is going to uh, deliver a, a deliver a shipment to any customer, they are well protected with uh, masks. They are having uh, carrying their sanitizer. Uh, they are uh, we are also monitoring the uh, type and uses of the sanitizer they are doing in times and also uh, within the warehouse. Uh, we are keeping all the activities very st staggered. It is not a very uh, like we do in a regular basis on the sortation and other part. We, keep, we have kept everything that <coughs> people should come with a particular time frame and they should go. And to maintain that, we are we also had a very big compliant way we have monitoring the things uh, throughout the day so that anywhere, because people understand these are all habits, eating food together, uh, talking, uh, I mean, uh, talking with each other within the warehouse, or standing with each other. All those are human behavior, and obviously, this behavior will not change in one day with one protocol or one meal. So, it is a, a regular habit which we are bringing within the system, and we believe that whatever we do, we, it should be at a very protected level, and we are doing that. And I think all the people, even I have as a customer, I have experienced Zomato and Swiggy. <laughs> They are also uh, following those parameters, and because everyone is worried about themselves, it is not to just showcase the thing, but they are also worried that they they should not carry that disease while doing or earning some money. So that we are doing. Going forward, we will also see after two three months what will happen after we do this all activities. There will be some new learning which will pop up, and we will adapt those things also to how to make it more. No, vigilant where people are uh, people can work still they can uh, they, uh, they can uh, take the proper measurement where this disease cannot be committed each other thank you uh if you kind of holker if you could just comment on a particular part of how you imagine the ecosystem so you have got these bottling plants where a lot of people employed from the neighboring villages if you could give us insights of how to manage the local ecosystem that could be very valuable for all of us right so uh, basically what we have done is we got plants all over the country and we have large distributors, we have large warehouses spread across. Secondly, it also comes under the part of essential because we also distribute a uh, lot of uh, you know water, aquafina, juices and all across the country as well. So what we have done is we have started operating our plants but the number of shifts have reduced as of now. Second point is that number of people in those shifts have reduced. It's only the essential people as per the required production plan. And the plans are not at the most optimum level as of now. So they have been allowed to come in. These people are also staying in plants. They also are being checked right from the time when they enter the plant to the time they work on the shop floor to the time they are resting, the food, everything is being monitored very closely because we are, as you said, Mr. Sethi, we are very sensitive single case can shut down a factory, right? Besides that, then there is the hiring of transport that takes place, the way, you know, our own trans transport fleet, which goes onto the ground for further distribution, whether it is primary, secondary, tertiary, because our kind of distribution is also to the, you know, at the consumer level, more or less, right? So recently we, even, in fact, went around a large number of stations where we distributed free water, juices and milk products to all the picket, you know, police picket posts, because those people also, you know, very, very thirsty, 24 hours a day, sitting in open sun, in this heat itself is a problem. So what we have done is whenever we go send people for distribution, that safety distance or social distancing is maintained, more or less all the orders are taken online, the payment is more encouraged online, so that the physical touching of articles as of now doesn't take place. And as I said, we are also trying to activate our HR team and the local team into more medical orientation towards the entire crisis where they understand the implications of everything that is happening and they should be the local doctors there. We are also incorporating the panchayat heads into these things where we 
are telling them, you know, as to why we need to get these boys onto the shop floor, how beneficial it would be. And in case if there are some local issues, we have distributed a lot of food uh, into the local villages, wherever it is necessary. So we have tried to, uh, you know, make them part of the entire process where they have equal stakes in ensuring that we look after them and they help us in, you know, ramping up the production. Thank you so much. That was very uh, good. Okay. Mr. Seti, only one point. Can I, can I intervene? So, I have rightly heard this. What is happening now? So far, warehouses were having different type of costings. Now, we are getting into social, social distancing cost. Now, social distancing cost, I mean, now I have we have to enhance the hygiene systems. As, uh, you know, uh, uh, Atul, Atul has rightly said. Number two, even we have to transport our employees or the laborers yes. with our own transport, maintaining the uh, social distancing issue. And third important thing is we need to take increased insurance policy for those people who are directly connected to the warehousing operation. And apart from that, we have to give certain amount of protective clothes. I'm talking about the software we need to supply to these people. What we need to understand, because here we are also having our customers, we should be allowed to add this social distancing cost in our warehousing cost, as we are all price sensitive. It should also be taken care by the customers. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. City, I just <laughs> add one point to what I missed. Just one point. See, it is like we are moving in an earthquake zone, which is very shaky. The importance of holding each other's hand is what is going to save us. We also need to temper our requirements and greeds. We were expecting our profits to be double digit all the time. We need to reduce that. We need to ensure humans are treated more humanly now post all this than we were doing earlier. Right? We can't be mechanical and absolutely greedy for everything. If we have to take care of a fellow human being who is working into our system, we need to take it. Right? So this is something I think it's the more normalization and balancing of humans that is taking place. And I'm also feeling the thing that when I work in my home now, I'm going to be more sensitive to the maid who works in home and ensure that she is happy while she works with us. Very well, fully put. With your permission, Jasteed, may I do it? Well, let me say two things very clearly. A, the outlook is not bad. Yes. We have to be very clear about that. Let's not delude ourselves with pessimistic thoughts. The road might be difficult financially yes. and from other points of view. But the, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, see the information given to me that Savills have more than 3 million square foot negotiations going on. And their house is going to acquire about a million square foot in Mumbai and MCR. Now, second point which Atul made was about the empathy. In our system, empathy is ingrained. Yes. However, that aspect that trade is not allowed to function because of the profit margins. What Zairu was talking about is about the stimulus and things like that. You need to have an organized lobbyist to yes. conduct the negotiations, talk to the politicians, the lawmakers, present papers, white papers, documented issues, why, and those documentation has to be given by publicity. Just talking about, yes, we need it. But we need much more than that is to be human. What Atul said, to have empathy. But I would say empathy with our substar. I always say charity begins at home. I must have self-love before I can love another person. That's right. I agree with you. Thank you. Thank when you we so for that, we will not be successful. But the outlook is not bleak just yet. Let me make it very clear. As a matter of fact, this is the only industry which is poised for growth much more than any other industry, provided as a provision. We change our attitude. We're going for more automation. We go in for 
artificial intelligence. Why should I have the labor over there when the drones can go and automation can do it much better? I won't have to suffer the same fate in the next pandemic when the laborers run away. So let's take a long-term perspective and then take necessary action. Thank you, Jitji. Uh, thanks, Dr. Lamba. I just want to keep a couple of uh, points from this last discussion and then we move on to the yeah, next. Just I want to add one thing. I want to add one thing. May I just see, uh, wrap this up yeah, and then uh, we go to the next step? Yeah, you, Dr. May just Victor, wrap this up? Uh, yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Can you Amartya, hear me? Can I just wrap this up and then we go to the next step, please? Just wrap this part I just, so far. I just want to add one point. Sorry, Jajit. I just want to add a critical part. Dr. Vikram, I totally take your point and I hear you very carefully. But all the problem of, with India is that we don't have big appetite. You need to understand every business is not actually making a lot of money. And thinking to get the support is bit, I, I, I am optimistic, we should be optimistic. But the difficulties are much intense. And this intensity will increase day by day. And the government appetite to support the entire system like the other countries are doing, that will not be so strong as we can assume because we are not so developed country as the other part of the world is like. So that is my one worry point. In this, what will happen, big names can still survive, but there are very micro industry and micro warehouses, micro logistics partner, micro that industry, and we are, they are not visible, they are not, uh, they are not audible to people, they doesn't come to any forum. Those can be slowly, they can be murdered within this entire journey of three. And that is a worry point because that is actually the backbone of the economy. Or the supply chain of the country right now. It is not the big names. That My is a very important. May you just come in between, please? Yeah. So I think we have to, have to keep moving on and uh, to the <laughs> to next subject. So what what uh, we uh, came out of the last part was that uh, in the current times, empathy is important. It's also important to my local ecosystem. And a word which has been mentioned by Dr. Uh, by Dr. Colonel Holker is that safety distance, you also mentioned physical. So I probably feel that the word social distance is not a good word because it keeps us away from each other, while maybe socially we have become more closer. So at least from the industry perspective, I would rather want to adopt the word of safety distance or physical distance rather than saying it is social distance. Okay. That, that leads to more empathy. Uh, I could see uh, Amartya nodding when uh, somebody was mentioning that they should be, you know, uh, no dehiring and people should be given due care and during COVID cost. I think Mr. Brito was talking about that. Uh, it is very, you know, uh, it's very good to hear these words from uh, people who are hiring uh, people either directly or through 3PLs that there should not be any pushback either to the workers or to the uh, uh, people who are giving them virosin on lease. But the actual could be a bit more different. I think we have all started to push back a little bit. And uh, it, it, it has happened in the industry that people are asking to get some concessions because everyone is seeing that how can I survive a bit more than the other. So the competitive spirit of India, of people like us, still comes to the fore. Just want a quick comment on that, not more than 10 seconds, that how many people feel that we should not be so competitive and look at our business partners and how many feel that no, Everyone has to, you know, put in their share. You go back for the tip. Yeah. Yes, Jeet, let's be very clear. It's a survival of the fittest. We have to be competitive. We have got to take the bull by the horns. And we are, that's the only way of survival. You are not competitive. You are ruined. There's, there's no option of not being competitive. No way. Uh, Mr. Xavier? Uh, basically, only one word. We have to switch over from uh, uh, supplier-vendor relationship to the partnership relationship. That is fine. Amartya? Yes, yeah, I, 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 I exactly. So, if we have a long-term view with any supplier or any partner, that should not be a supplier. It should be a partnership. We should be right. very transparent in this crisis. We should understand where we are standing and we should hold our, each other hand. For that, if we need to increase some rate and we need to compromise certain uh, financial value, that is fine. But we need to see at least for three, four months, we need to survive each other. At the second stage, again, we can be more competitive. But this is a human nature and Indians by nature are a bit warm. 
and they help each other in when in times of crisis that is a historical trend shows that and same people are managing this company so i am totally for, uh, in the way we should not be competitive we should hold each other hand and take it for the this journey this will you also see, when i said uh, uh, Jeet, when i said let's not be competitive i was talking of the global level right that's why i said when martya was talking i said mergers and acquisitions combining so Okay, let's stand that, sir. Let, let's move on. So, Jaji, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I want to put one point. If you can include within whenever you are doing a conversation, the warehouse clustering part of cross India is right. that impacted COVID? Uh, that could have been better planning. Just a po point where we are being structured. We cover that. Warehouse. Yeah, that's the best part. We cover that. Uh, let's focus on Holka. If you want to add anything, though, already you have communicated it quite well, and yeah. we have got good viewpoints here. If you want to add anything? Okay, just very short things. Firstly, is when we talk about competition, it's an external competition. When right. we look into partnership, that is internal. Your own people, your Absolutely. vendors, your internal humans, your the workforce which is working with you. So these are two different things. And I'll add to what Dr. Lamba said. It is not only the survival of the fittest, but survival of the quickest. Right. You have to be very agile in the changing environment to adapt as early as possible. So I'll just take one second more, uh, Mr. Sethi. There are three major principles of dealing of supply chain in such environment, and these are called the triple A's. You got to be agile, start seeing what is going to come now. You need to be adaptable. You need to adapt to the change circumstances, whether it's related to government or circumstances or people or consumers, and you need to be aligned. And when you say aligned, your partners, your people, your workforce has to be aligned to one objective that we need to bring it on road for this particular company. So this is how these three things will help us. Thank you very much. No better way to end this part of this session. Let's go to the next part, which is also alluded by Amartya as well. In the centuries of our history, we have constantly strived to change things, create routes that connect our past to present, and prepare for a future of possibilities. A future dependent entirely on elements of economic growth, elements like logistics. And we are here to ensure that logistics is delivered with precision. We are the global leaders of supply chain solutions, offering single window solutions for integrated logistics across all verticals. With a customized fleet of owned trucks, trailers, including refrigerated trucks and stainless steel tank tainers, we are now a symbol of shared dominance in modern warehouse and distribution center management. Our commitment to HSE includes exceeding all applicable safety and health regulations, constantly improving our standards and creating a flawless safety culture. We are the recognized leaders of the futuristic approach in logistics with an exemplary service suite and cutting edge solutions. We believe in knowledge sharing and building thought leadership in the field of logistics. So when GHT came in, in uh, July 2017, everybody felt that why have 28 <coughs> warehouses, we can do with six or eight. And let's have bigger boxes. The bigger the box, the more efficient it is. You can have a lot of automation in that. You can have better productivity throughputs. That was a general trend and last uh, two and a half, three years, people have been working, almost three years now, have been working in that direction, consolidate. This pandemic has put a new factor to it, which is be close to the customer. The example of Kranos store, which we have just mentioned. And also the threat, which was mentioned by Lieutenant Colonel Holker, one positive COVID case, so any one issue can shut down a plant or shut down a location. So do you feel that as a business continuity program, People would want to look at more number of warehouses, being more cl closer to the customer, and look at moving away from areas which have been very pandemic prone. I've had a customer saying that all my warehouses are in pandemic shutdown areas. So we have complimented him that you are the right hotspots. You've done a very <laughs> good designing of your network, but that is not a very good idea right now. So I think I'll start with you, Amartya, because you booted this point. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so my viewpoint in 2019, warehousing sector saw 77% of growth. Okay. And I, I am referring to a secondary source of uh, thing. And the growth was majorly in uh, Kolkata, Hyderabad, and Bangalore city where the growth is. But overall, if you see the warehousing sector, 
this those all the warehouses are actually uh, clustered between 3 to 5 cities and other cities like two tier city three tier cities we don't have that type of infrastructure where we can cater the goods <clears throat> now judge uh, the important part is we need to understand is that situation when we don't have proper logistics movement because of the manpower or situation like this where uh, what we are having or there is a red zone areas which is declared by government and we are having a specific warehouse in only four five cities that is actually a threat to our country and we need to understand even if you see the gdp growth that also come the gdp contribution also come for four to five cities but for to five states majorly and in this way this crisis we should take a very good learning and we should have a, some national policies where we can uniform the warehouse in across india if we could have do that done that then this situation could have been handled in much but much better way because many states in india now is actually covid free and they are, they have actually started allowing movement of goods or manufacturing activities so both way warehouse in when i say it is not only storage but manufacturing also and as a india is a big country we should be very much clear about the minimum need of the warehousing in each cities and each states that is the point thank you uh uh okay. so uh, uh you have uh, mr said you have rightly said the one is that there is a supply chain diversification is changing according to the demands of the consumers that is absolutely acceptable factor sometime back with a special secretary they wanted the norms for the warehousing i said to avoid the unhealthy competition it came in the website also they made it a policy that i said a minimum size of a warehouse has to be after this gst post gst regime i said it has to be minimum of 1 lakh square foot with a minimum of investment like we have it for cfs and icd certain area restriction as well as the investment plan i have also told them that it has to be minimum 20 crores investment so that what is happening sometimes unhealthy competition happens because there are there are people who are running non non uh, set planned warehouses my idea now is that basically if you could think like in hong kong and other places if the government can allow multi story warehousing concept within the city limits probably we can go to the customers and consumers very quickly thank you just let me clear excuse me for butting in sir so you the more diversification would take place it will lead to sourcing locally we need to locally source the product manufacturing them and also spread these manufacturing base and then when the manufacturing base is spread then the storage facilities would also spread where the consumers are there so the warehousing has to concentrate in two places near the manufacturing and near the consumer until you can correlate the two it will not be possible to diversify further thank you what can holkar yeah so uh, basically my take is that the world has changed considerably right from right. nationalism to globalization to not national globalization is what is going to take place secondly disruption will become a norm in future as supply chain professional we have to have plan a to z and probably more than that to have multiple sourcing so there has to be a very strategic view of the entire supply chain globalization will be there but with adequate guarantees or alternatives available to the system the inventory will be maintained locally and at a higher level gone are the days of lean inventory where yeah. we were not ready to take shock so there is a good news for warehousing number of warehouses will increase again right whether it is for raw material intermediate or final product this thing it will happen nation as a nation we are very fortunate even if we go for protectionism we have enough of consumer for our growth to be you know just to grow in exponentially great time for india right one thing which i can tell you is we need to watch out is the high activity on social media which can make and mar any industry people have become very very addicted to social media and this is there to stay
but i can i can see a great time for warehouse industry it doesn't matter whether you are in a hot spot or not but eventually right. things will settle down to a workable level absolutely right you know you. To... we have a lot of questions out here as well if i may ask some of them and uh, i have already taken some of these as of now uh, one question which is about recruitment uh who would want to take that question so this is a you know question by supply chain professional others is that how difficult is going to be for freshers to look for jobs after this ends uh to kanholkar yeah so uh just just to uh, tell our viewers i i have my own website on ratulholkar.com and i also have another website called artofworking.co.in where i consult lot of people students professional supply chain professional few things we need to be very clear the world has changed you need to adapt to that world and you need to change as well the knowledge which was there even in good times is not going to be applicable now please start reskilling relearning even in supply chain have dynamic attitude of adopting to the changes that are happening don't be absolutely in that safe zone this is how 9 to 5 job works it will work 24 hours a day at times second point is be adaptable to take any job that company offers within the system don't say i am a supply chain person so i can't look in little bit of marketing be dynamic right and also be aware so you should be aware what industries are going to work which industry is going to succeed and align yourself to the future because this impact is going to change the way the industries are going to work the marketing humans are not disappearing human needs are not going to disappear they will only change as per the required circumstances so our young people who are watching uh, this particular show must be very resilient and adapting to the change realign yourself to the circumstances which are being thrown so every adversity is an opportunity to grow don't get complacent telecom industry was in complacency because the best of the iit and iim people went there and they thought that is the end because they have stopped learning and then when the technology came in most of the people were out of job so now when the technology comes supply chain people as such are very resilient they are very prone to taking all these kind of pressures every day i'm sure they will be very successful just start learning more reading more uh, being aware more so it's so, uh, a great answer uh, yeah, i will come to the question uh, I, uh, if uh, so firstly see all the people who are very young who are just out of the college they need not to worry right the 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 the, the point we take uh, fresher in a, any organization is that they bring up energy they bring fresh ideas and they bring productivity which we don't think so that will continue in the system the crisis is a, a, a very small time it is a short time crisis and their future is very secure in this country and coming to my organization i am very fortunate i belongs to flipkart we have kept each and every job offer which we have given before covid and also there is we have kept as much as possible the care of the employees as a company policy across across the vertical it is not only one hierarchy but across the hierarchy and coming to coming from that culture i can assure you companies like this exist more in the, in our ecosystem and they will take care of you just need to learn i think i i totally take atul holkar i i really love the way he has spoken regarding guiding the youngster and i i will request in the time when you don't right now we cannot take any people because we don't have we don't have work because we We are, our demand has not there, so there might be one or two months of crisis. But after the, within this time frame, you should learn wherever it is possible. There are a lot of articles. There are a lot of people in LinkedIn, even I have seen, where they are trying to give the mentorship to the, uh, the the young guys who are coming from MBA college or fresher out for the graduation. And do like that. Be optimistic. Nothing will worry. 2008, we have seen. This is much better than that. So uh, the things will move very fast and in a different way in the upcoming days. Uh, dear Sethi, dear yeah. Sethi, the... uh, sir, can I just come back to you in a moment? I have another question for you, uh, Mr. Brito. Just come back to you yes. in a moment. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. So that yeah. was the, both are very, uh, you know, very positive for the youngsters who are out there. The next question I would want to address it to Mr. Brito. This question talks about uh, automation in warehousing. Whether companies who are offering metal handle equipment will grow more in the future. Before I ask the question, we qualify it. that so far uh, 
uh, India supply chain has been working like multiple islands. Cargo comes into a CFS in a container. It is de-stuffed and put it onto pallets. It may be loaded onto trucks using a head load. It goes to a warehouse, which may be a block storage and just kept as is. It goes to a modern warehouse, is again palletized and put on the racks. When the cargo has to go out to a dealer who doesn't have this kind of equipment, it's de-palletized at the dock and sent out in trucks or again as a head load. So our supply chain is not very smooth. It works through a lot of these ups and downs. So uh, do you feel that this is the moment where people would look rather than having a head load? If you have to load a 20 tonner truck with a 50 kg uh, head load at one point, you will be doing about 400 trips. If you do it with pallets, you may do about 20 pallets movement into that truck as well. So Mr. Brito, in your experience, because you are there from the port downstream as well, Global trade completely containerized, domestic trade largely on head load, largely on open trucks. What's your take when the automation would come in, in the whole ecosystem, big media catalyst, or still come only in pockets? Over to you. Now, if you want to adopt operational efficiency, we need to have the automation. And uh, as Mr. Atul has clearly said, uh, in meanwhile, there's a question about, do you feel that the warehousing requirement will go up or go down? So, Jeet, I personally feel that within the next few years, the demand for the warehousing is definitely going to go up. And that is required for three reasons. A, the manufacturing is going to be decentralized, but the procurement is also going to be decentralized to bring the procurement and the manufacturing together. That's one stage. The second stage is going to be from the manufacturing to the consumers. So for all that, you need more and more warehouses all over in grade A cities, grade B cities, and quite possible in assemblage of grade C cities as well. But demand will definitely increase. And I have a feeling that it would increase in the next two years by about 20%. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. That's a very clear figure which you have given. Uh, Amartya, your comments on that? And then we'll <laughs> So I have the same opinion. Warehousing will not come down. Warehousing will be increased. But yeah, there will be some strategic alignment which will be the, uh, you will see in the next two, three months where the ecosystem of how warehouse is being spread right now, there can be a drastic change in the supply chain overall. And that is a disruption which can happen and we should be prepared for it. It can be a beverage company, e-commerce company or garment, anything. But the way we were holding inventory with the policy and certain, because that, that source China, which is also supplying to many countries, there is a lot of uh, problems we are facing to get those material from there. And if that persists, then the level of inventory which you are holding, that will go up. And if that goes up, then which are the areas where the warehouse will be placed? Which are the areas we need to shut down the warehouses? That will have a little bit of change. And that will we will get a very clear picture in the next three months how the demand and supply pattern is working for us. But warehouse definitely is going to change. Yeah. Colonel Holker, we also have Mr. Beto back. We'll come back to Mr. Beto in a moment. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming back. Uh, Dr. Kanal, what's your view on the warehousing space? Will it go yeah. up? Yeah. So basically, I, what I, my take is that the war has just begun. It, we have not come to a stabilization level at this <laughs> to understand what actually the situation is. Right. So from the army perspective, I can say it's just the fog of war right now. We do not know where it is taking us. So none of these decisions are going to be taken now. We are reacting to this situation. Response will be much thought after later, after some time, when we read the situation. So we are currently, most of the industries are just reacting to the dynamism with this entire virus is thrown at us. Response will be a well-calculated, well-rehearsed, well-researched kind of a thing, which we see probably six months down the lane when people will understand the entire complications this virus has thrown to us. Now, only thing is definitely warehousing space is required because we would like to be more local than global. That is where we are going to be. Our consumption pattern, I'm very sure, Mr. Sethi, 
are going to increase after one year. You will be rest assured. I am a student of positive psychology as well. I see positivity in this, and I see that we will be a great power within one year. The countries don't want to work anymore in China. It's time Modi opens the door for them with best of the options available in India. So not only warehousing, the manufacturing is also going to go up. Let's be positive. That, that, that would be a great statement to end the conference with, but we'll have to wait a little bit more for that. Thank you very much for that positivity. Uh, we have Mr. Brito back again with us. We were speaking about uh, automation uh, when he was just connected. Mr. Yeah. Brito, uh, please uh, continue. I will quickly combine the points. One is that automation is going to be the future. As uh, you know, uh, Atul said, for automation, now we require skilled people. And there is, well, the future is going to be for the skilled people to be employed in our industry. That is why I have already advocated the structuring of uh, structuring of our logistic education. In fact, I gave all the subjects and then approved. We are running the logistics college, wherein we have structured the complete supply chain management education, so that there is no such on-the-job training. People are already getting equipped with the required knowledge and join the industry. But then the future is very, very bright, as again, Atul has rightly said, because I, you know, having gone through 35 years of my experience in the supply chain, <clears throat> now we are moving into from just in time inventory. We are now moving into the stage where because of this COVID, we may have to have enough stocks and things like that. People will start rethinking about it. So I think uh, our uh, prime minister has been very, very proactive. Couple of years back itself, he has given make in India. That is India is going to be an attractive uh, uh, country for shifting the industries back here. Number one, that is make in India. Number two, he also made it very clear about digital India. The future is going to be on a digital basis because everything is on a digital platform. And the third important thing he himself said, skill India. Now we are coming into India where it, we have to skill our people and the skilled laborers have to, it is part of automation. I would say it is part of technology development. Then only we could achieve the operational efficiency which is required. The last one, which is very, very important, you will see that a lot of startup industries will come in in new areas, particularly food industry, particularly food industry and pharma and cold chain storage and distribution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brito. Uh, next question about e-commerce. So I would request uh, Amartya to please take that question. Yes, about the retail industry. The apparel retail is very worried because uh, A, they are not an essential. B, most of these malls may remain closed for a long time. Mm. So our, the, what, uh, the question is that should they have their own e-commerce portals and not okay. depend on other e-commerce portals to reduce their cost of having big shop outlets, which, uh, which would reduce their cost of uh, retail rentals. See, uh, there are two questions, what, what I understand. And there is one question, what will happen to the retail store who are selling mainly the garments or textiles? So this is one question. Second question is that the shift in supply chain basis the e-commerce uh, channel if we can do through e-commerce channel it will reduce their cost or not this is the second aspect of the question first aspect is very clear the demand of the uh, demands of the industry will depend on the demand from the customer and we are we are actually actually finding the demand will go a bit lower because people will be a bit conservative to uh, to spend on non-essential communities like lifestyle products, majorly a lifestyle good. So uh, that is that there will be we are anticipating there will be lower in demand and that can happen. This is one. Second, will if they shut down their retail and can they cater the entire demand through the e-commerce? Yes, they can do. But what is the fee? The um, the entire uh, the world was actually moving through omni-channel retail. Omni-channel is that you are present everywhere. Now suddenly we are trying to say e-commerce will cater everything. That will never happen. So e-commerce will be having a higher demand and they can do that through their own website or through the channel button like Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra and all. But still they need the visibility within the uh, society because these are all aspirational products, understand. 
these are not uh, only a product which is needed so retail presence is also required and they will be in retail they will not uh, closing the all retail center and you will see the footfall will be also with the uh, what the condition slowly uh, they will uh, they will be increasing pattern for next 2 3 month or 6 month or 1 year but again they, there will be a good portion of customer who will move to the retail uh, e-commerce and uh, many uh, many uh, companies have already their e-commerce website and they can also take the help from, from collaboration uh, uh, with the website like mintra and all so the both channel will be there will be increase in uh, there will be a decrease in demand that is there second retail will stay third they can also come up with flipkart or amazon or mintra or another channel partner to deliver the goods to the customer that's Thank that's my answer Thank you. I think the question was more around: Should the uh, retail players become more omni-channel? The same warehouse is feeding the stores as well as it is feeding the direct consumers. So uh, omni-channel. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I will just uh, put up on omni-channel. They are already. They, it is not a new thing for them to sell through online, right? They are already on uh, omni-channel. In case the demand comes more in uh, e-commerce, the demand will go for e-commerce. If that goes to the retail, it will go to the retail. Omni-channel is not something new for any brand like uh, any brand. If you name, uh, they are already omni-channel. Like they will be in future. They want to go directly. The question was that shall we go directly rather than going through an e-commerce portal? That was directly, direct, directly going is a bit difficult for them. They cannot spread through so many pin codes. India is a vast country, and address is a problem. they need to go with they can have certain part cities where they can do directly but many part of the country they need to cater through the uh, e-commerce channel partners because they don't have the cost availability to absorb that within the supply chain cost right so the short answer is that yes they can do the omni channel from the warehouse but they will face challenges in terms of the last mile delivery correct so can hold on to add something to that point yeah so what i would say is that see let's not look into the models and uh, you know i may slightly disagree with mr guha of models of flipkart or amazon only right they are people who are selling everything from a to z but when if i am a retailer and i am into a particular segment then i would still like to maintain my integrity in terms of a different feel altogether so i agree with uh, you know amrita that you know you cannot have that same kind of delivery model but each individual shop is a hub in itself in that particular city they need to up the ante to bring in more technology to ensure that the customer has that feel so they can have you know where you can have a fashionable website where you get into it look into the have the feel of the clothes to upload your entire picture into a profile into that and see how that clothes feels on you and then you have a some kind of a connection to your local tailor for fitment or something so very innovative solutions have to come out from these particular industries to give a very localized feeling which is different from flipkart and amazon which is more transactional it has to be more personal when you do and you can definitely besides the omni channel you are uh, omni uh, omni channel you can also have that special feeling of still maintaining the integrity of your localized customer every shop in a city caters only for the local life if you can create something around that with the use of technology you can still be a winner thank you very much and before the next question we have a rejoinder from uh, one of the attendees here yeah, this is a rejoinder is to mr brito he has just put a remark that 56 companies moved out of china the last 45 days most of them have gone to vietnam taiwan thailand and only 3 came to india so maybe something to introspect for india on that part not not a question to be asked to you just a fact uh, somebody just give the rejoinder and all not, those, not a what, what, all those companies which moved out immediately were all smaller companies we are yes. waiting for the bigger ones only thing is as a positivity you coming have, in you would right. have read, you would have read i think government has put a, instead of automatic route uh, they expect the chinese company to take a direct permission from the government so that could be the slave uh, process so we have to make it ease of doing faster right the next question is uh, to everyone here and that talks about uh, restart up that how many days do you think it will take for things to be normalized uh, mainly with regard to distribution and the primary and the last miles the first mile the middle mile the last mile how many days post 
the government says okay the lockdown has stopped or is going to be a new normal with ease down starts how many days for it to come back to normal with regard to distribution network open to any just, one of you just ji let's be very clear once you stop starting always takes some time but here the stoppage was not intentional it was an enforced stoppage and most of the people are raring to go so after the lockdowns are lifted i think within a month the things should be back start getting back on the lines they will start getting back on the rails but the real momentum we would see in a period of 3 months after the lockdown is finished after a period of 6 months the things would start not only be normal but they will start climbing up so my view is one month start up three months full steam after three months start steaming ahead and after six months was to grow exponentially thank you see so uh, my my take is like this that within six weeks you should have the primary movement starting absolutely right within 3 months the secondary movements will come to its level which we desire 8 90 95% where we need to work is the tertiary movement the retail movement where we need to understand localized Money. situation localized situation this covid lockdown will continue for another 6 months to 1 year but localized few mohallas few roads few cities small small townships may go for small lockdowns and for that the tertiary movement the local distribution needs to adapt regularly keep your ears on ground and understand whether what is happening and change the map so my my submission to the industry is work on the local distribution on every plan a to z if this happens this this happens this that's what we do in like war gaming you have to work on every scenario to be prepared when it actually start taking off don't sit now start preparing at this stage for me yeah, uh, but... according to me the forwarding distribution is going to be the challenge but what i mean by forwarding this is the migrant laborers have to come back because most of our drivers are unloading loading people you know practically we have to think it will take some time according to me to get stabilized it will take 3 months thank you uh, so i have one of the last questions to end with uh, there is a question that how do you see the festival season of 2020 going forward so festival season generally is to start from onam in kerala and then uh, ganesh chaturthi in uh, maharashtra other parts then you would have uh, durga puja in the east and diwali and dashara in the north this time the dates of uh, uh, ganesh chaturthi is 22nd of uh, august onam is 2nd of september uh, durga puja is 4 to 8th october and diwali is 14th of november so from end of august to november how do you see the festival season for this year would people be coming out uh, to spend money on retail point of view would supply chains be ready just maybe crystal glazing, glazing. and if you are building such scenarios so anybody could answer everybody could give their comments on that let's just ji let's be clear again you repress a ball and it bounces back your question has two aspects one is a consumer behavior other is a supply chain and the supply behavior consumer would be willing to buy he might not have capacity to buy there are two past aspects majority of the people would have the capacity to buy but the vast majority of the suburban classes would not have the capacity to buy so the festival season for that part of the society which does not have the capacity to buy they have the will to buy but they don't have the purse to buy it will be subdued similarly supply chain would not be immediately affected as we said a period of 3 months so overall this time the festival season would not see that sort of sale purchase as we used to see earlier it will be on a subdued level only one only one word 
our festival will be this time will be a restricted festival and a confined right. festival. absolutely right. confined festival absolutely okay so my my take is uh, mr sethi you forgot one festival and that is the end of the lockdown you will see <laughs> has been celebrated big time the end of lockdown we may not come very close to each other but we will <laughs> celebrate one thing that will sell is all moderately and low priced articles people will love to have one pepsi instead of a single malt right <laughs> which they can afford to buy they would like to eat sweets they would like to do thing they may not buy cars immediately but yeah. celebration will be brought back by people themselves they are fed up of this fear factor not the virus the fear factor we have been cornered by a fear and we will celebrate i'm telling you a moment this lockdown is over so i yes. don't see that i see a very good festive season but we should be looking into low price point at this stage the beauty one and, like. the beauty. and i think they will be celebrating with other drinks yeah yeah no no you, i i would insist uh, mr brito you have pepsi first then you can have anything else. come on <laughs> that can also be mixed up <laughs> so goa no no sir my take is actually covered by everyone i take the dr vikram's word ki there will be a segment who don't have money who want to spend they will be there will be spending less yeah. secondly there will be uh, particular uh, categories which will be having a effect during the festival the first point we we'll always have a very good uh, sales is automobile real estate in due to during the festival period because sentiments are very positive as it will be a confined festival there will be spending spending will be there festival will be there but in a very smaller scale and people will be bit uh, bit conscious regarding the spending if they have money also uh, that will be the last aspect uh, that's all i think that's where we will start for the first phase but by, by the next year everything will be normal that uh, we need not to worry yeah thank you and one any one last one. words by anyone any last words yeah only Anybody one word one, only one word i want to add you know we are talking about warehousing so much our people have to start looking into free trade zone warehousing very seriously because that concept has not picked up well it has got lot of advantages at this juncture because any foreign client need not put their manufacturing unit fully physically here rather he can bring the product duty free and test the waters and later on he can get into the trading or manufacturing so all of us you know the government itself should encourage this free trade zone where which are they have brought up now bond manufacturing units that will be that will be the order of the day in future Excellent. i have this is i have last for one uh, one important message to uh, give all of us all of the people who have been uh, participating in this meeting understand warehouse health will not be uh, determined by the area or the space it will be determined the quality of warehousing will be determined by the people who are working there we should in this crisis we should not compromise their compensation bonuses because if their lifestyle becomes poorer then obviously that effect will come to the final experience or quality of the supply chain so let us make very sure the people who are in the last stage of the supply chain they should be protected first obviously the entire thing when this thing will come to a stabilized situation we will be coming in a much better place so that is a very critical we should have empathy and we should take care of all the people who are working across thank you amartya i would request uh, a doctor is he is not here i think have we lost no dr lamba if we can request for last comments from you yes. then i would request uh, dr karan holkar to give the final final comments of the session thank you just it <clears throat> the situation is not too bad as i've always been saying it's not rosy but the future is extremely bright the supply chain is the base of any circular economy let's not forget this day that if we have to move ahead in the circular economy if the gig economy has to be successful supply chain and the warehousing are an integral and the most important part of that and luckily in spite of covid-19 i shall say despite covid-19 the future is very bright for this industry provided 
I'm making a provision. We adapt A and we go in for modernization of the concept of warehousing. We go in for automation. We go in for artificial intelligence and make all possible efforts to make them par excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kara Holkar, the stage yeah. is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Sethi, uh, this has been an amazing time. I must tell you this. First time, it is akin to your mobile phone. You have a mobile smartphone. You have been loading so many applications which you never used in your lifetime. And it has slowed you down earlier before this COVID hit. <laughs> what have you done? You have reset your life like a phone. Removed unnecessary applications which were slowing you down. I have been able to work. I have been able to spend time with family. I have been able to upskill myself. The digital thing which I have learned, I am launching my own YouTube channel now. I have done it all by myself now. Earlier, I used to look for support how to handle and operate our technology. The, I used to think those people who get into IITs are the most privileged. The best institutes in the world are offering courses free of cost. Time to grab, learn, reskill and be ready for another life. This is one point when you can restart. Sometimes we were drifting. We were just comparing ourselves with others. Look at who has died. The Facebook has died. No one wants to upload pictures anymore. Because it is, you know, suddenly you don't have a face. What you have is a heart. So what I did to overcome my fear is I went to Gurgaon authorities. I am managing their control room of civil defense. So three o'clock my shift starts. Before that, I do my office work. Three to seven, I sit there. Seven, I come back after... These, uh, you know, sanitizing, I start working on technology. I have never worked so much in my life, Mr. Sethi. And I'm so positive that after COVID, if you meet me, I'll be a very different Atul Holkar. So, no matter what to end that, that goes for most of us. We have all been actually working harder than work, uh, work life as well. And uh, also working a lot smarter, more rounded off. We are doing things we didn't do earlier. Probably for many of us in our midlife, this was also something wanting to happen so we can have the reset button put on that has been done. But back to the warehousing piece, uh, I think excellent uh, views from the panelists. We couldn't have asked for more. We all go back a lot more enriched than earlier. And thank you to everyone uh, on the panel and the participants who have given their time, uh, almost their lunch time. That's a normal meal at this point in time. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the questions, the insights that people have given. Uh, have, a, have a good day and evening ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you. What a remarkable discussion we had today. Uh, so I would like to give the final remarks. I would like to say thank you to all our knowledgeable speakers. And we had very awesome and uh, patient, uh, patient audience today. I believe supply chain people have resilience, as uh, our panelists have mentioned. And uh, this is a very challenging time, and it will pass by soon. And uh, we will emerge victorious. I have full confidence. We all have very full confidence on this. I request everyone to follow uh, hashtag Logistics Industries United on LinkedIn and keep reading Logistics Insiders media portal to stay updated and stay empowered. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yes. So uh, now we are going to move uh, on um, the networking session. So all the attendees can uh, go for the networking area and can have the discussion. We are taking a break now. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all the eminent panelists. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you, Olga, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sir, Dr. Lamba. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes.